All right, we've encountered dictionaries before, but we never really go into depth. So let's uh, dive in and understand how dictionary actually works. Um, unlike sequences, which are indexed by a range of numbers, dictionary are indexed by keys, uh, which can be any immutable types. Strings and numbers can always be keys. Uh, tuple can be used as keys if contain only strings, number of tuples. If a tuples contain any immutable objects either directly or indirectly, it cannot be used as key. So uh, with that, uh, probably best to actually look at this one more definition here is best to think of a dictionary as an unordered, unordered set of key and value pairs. Okay, so once you actually see the example, it will be easier to understand. So we might come back to revisit this. So this is what you call a dictionary. Um, you have the key which is Jim and 1550 is the number associated with Jim and Bob uh, is another key 1010 is the actual um, value to, that goes with Bob so we store that um, let's do one more line here so let's do type customer information and you notice that it comes through as dictionary um, so if we want to look up um, here we actually want to save Lisa uh, into the dictionary. Now we have three customers. If we want to delete customer information Jim, uh, Jim is no longer in the list. If we add another customer's information which is Liz, it will also be added as well. Um, if we want to look for the different keys, you can actually use customer underscore info which is the uh, variable name to access the keys by dot keys uh, bracket and will give you the three keys, which is Bob, Lisa, and Liz. <clears throat> and you can test whether Liz is in the customer information by just simply uh, in, uh, is Jim in? The answer will also uh, be given back. Now you can actually use uh, the uh, DICT constructor to build dictionary directly from sequence of key value uh, pairs. This is the key, this is the value. You can actually construct it this way. Uh, in addition, DICT or dic dictionary dic comprehension can be used to create dictionaries from arbitrary key and value expression. So we have um, a so-called comprehension here. This is a dictionary comprehension. So we're looking at range 10 to 16 step of two. X is the actual uh, value that's unpacking from this we're using a for loop here. So you have a key. The key is x, and then the value is x to the power of 3. Uh, so that you have the key, and then the x to the power value of 3. When the keys are simple strings, it's sometimes easier to specify a pair using key word arguments, such as this. Uh, you have the dictionary, uh, the keyword arguments, and then the value, keyword arguments, and the value, especially if these are simple strings. Okay, so that basically is what it looks like. So let's look at looping techniques as well that comes with uh, a dictionary. Uh, when looping through dictionaries, the key and corresponding value can be retrieved at the same time using the items methods. Okay, so let's uh, look at this um, scale dictionary here. Scale small is S, large is L. So you have key and value in scale dot items. Okay, so basically what you have now is that you have the key is small, uh, the value is capital S, and on and on it goes. To loop over two or more sequences at the same time, the um, entries can be paired with the zip function. So what we're doing here is that we are zipping Apple and IBM uh, using basically the function called zip. And then for the two stock, um, the stock price, one stock price two or stock one stock two and then you're printing them out this way to loop over a sequence in reversed uh, we just basically need to use the key called reverse and when we do that we're just printing the numbers backwards to loop over a sequence in sorted order use the sorted function which returns a new sorted list uh, you have this list here uh, set to reduce or, or just cut it down and then sort it to order it in uh, alphabetical order. Now sometimes it's tempting to change a list while you are looping over it. However, it is often simpler and safer to create a new list instead. 
you have import method, these are the raw number, uh, we're creating an empty list called filter data. So for value in raw data, if not math is not a number value, okay, then filter data append the value. Uh, if not, meaning if it's uh, if it's not a number, if it's not not a n not a number, okay, meaning it is a valid number, then add append the value. So there you have the value with the not a number removed altogether. Okay, so um, let me just uh, stop here. We will come on to uh, conditions. We cover dictionary and also the looping techniques. Pretty much the looping techniques actually stand alone, but it covers a little bit of the dictionary. It's useful to know. Uh, so let's move on from that, uh, and we'll go on to conditions a little later.